Hi class, today we're going to continue on in our classification section for chapter 17. Um, so we're going to get a little more detail on how organisms are classified. Classification, classification is based on evolutionary relationships. So we're looking at individuals and how they're related to others based on the change over time or evolution of those organisms. So one way we can classify organisms is through homologous structures, which these have the same structure but different function. Uh, and if you think back, I'll have to show a picture again, but if you think back to our last chapter, we talked about this. Similar embryo development and similarities in DNA, RNA, or proteins. These were all from our evolution section as well as evidences of evolution. Here's homologous structures as an example. So their bone structures are there, um, but they're using them as different function. Embryo um, similarities. All right, our next terms here, phylogenetics, is the analysis of the evolutionary or ancestral relationships among a group. So we're looking at a group that we have already classified that they kind of fit together based on form and structure. And now we're going to look at their history or their ancestry and kind of put them together. A phylogenetic diagram or tree is a branching tree that shows how closely related species are. So in this tree, we see fish, birds, monotremes, marsupials, and eutherians. And we are looking at the relationship of them based on how they have evolved over time. So this branch here evolved into birds, and then this grouping here, monotremes, and then um, evolution again, marsupials, and then eutherians. Here's another example of how one might look. You guys actually used one of these um, in our last section, our last chapter, with one of our labs on lizards. And you saw an evolutionary tree there that you worked with. All right, a cladogram is a diagram that shows how organisms are related based on certain characteristics, things like feathers, hair, or scales. So we're looking at these shared characteristics and then showing our evolutionary tree based on these characteristics. Here's an example. Um, you have this one in your notes packet as well. And if you don't, you may want to draw it in. Um, basically, if there's an, a trait that is listed, anything below it does not have that trait. So right here, we have a lancelet. And then we have vertebral column, which is kind of classifies the rest of the things above that statement. Vertebral column have a vertebral column. Then we have a lamprey. And something that classifies all the rest of them as different from the lamprey is a jawbone. So everything above lamprey has a jawbone. And then we have grouper. And above that, we have four-legged locomotion. And so salamander, turtle, and wolf all have four legs and the grouper does not. Anything below it does not. Grouper, lamprey, and lancelet. Amniotic eggs pulls out salamander, and now we have a turtle and a wolf only. And then hair classifies only the wolf, and so the turtle gets pulled out of that. Okay, we're going to do a build your own here in a second as well on your notes packet. You have a spot to do that, and we'll do that here in just a second. Here's another one just to show you kind of an example. You can use this as well if you'd like. OK, so on this one, we're going to create a cladogram from the following. So we get our characteristics here, kangaroo, earthworm, amoeba, lizard, cat, sponge, and salmon. And then we have our characteristics, segmented jaws, um, segmented, sorry, jaws, hair, placenta, multicellular, and limbs. And so what you're going to look at is how many characteristics each individual has or doesn't have. Um, the individual that has the most um, of these characteristics is going to be at the top of our chart or our tree, and the one with the least is going to be at the bottom. Okay, so on your um, notes packet, you can put this chart if you'd like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw what the um, cladogram would look like. I'm going to kind of draw it on here just so it's all on one page and you can see it. So we have our first individual is going to be the amoeba. And then the first characteristic that will get pulled out is multicellular. 
Because if you notice, the amoeba has nothing, no characteristics, none of these characteristics. And the next organism, that would be our organism one, is the one that has only one characteristic. And that characteristic is multicellular right here. So that next organism that's going to get pulled out is the sponge. And then we're going to look for our next trait. So now we need to find an individual that has only two of the traits, and that's going to be the earthworm. Okay, and the trait here is segmented. Okay, and so then we're going to look for the next organism that has three characteristics. It's going to be down here, the salmon. And the characteristic is jaws. That's different from the others. Okay, next we will look for the organism um, that has four of the characteristics. And that's going to be here, the lizard. And then we'll compare those characteristics and see which one hasn't been used yet. Segmented jaws we've already used. Multicellular, but we haven't used the limbs. So that's going to go here. And so then we're going to look for our next individual, which is going to be the kangaroo. And the characteristic there would be hair. And then we're going to look for our last individual on this one is going to be cat. And the difference here is going to be placenta. So again, everything, once a characteristic is labeled, that means everything below it does not have that, but everything above it does have that characteristic. And that's how a cladogram is done. And then our last term here is dichotomous key. And a dichotomous key is used to identify organisms um, characteristics are given in pairs. You read both characteristics and you either go to another set of characteristics or you identify the organism. We will be practicing some of these in class with um, a couple worksheets. Here's an example um, at 1A or B. So are there tentacles present? You would go to 2 if there are tentacles. Um, if tentacles are absent, you would go to 3. So if we take our first organism there, that first picture, um, we would take and go to two, eight tentacles, we would count those tentacles, and if there are eight tentacles, then it's called an octopus. If there's more than eight tentacles, you would go to three. So do the tentacles hang down? You go to four. If the tentacles are upright, then it's a sea anemone. Um, if it's a balloon-shaped body, it's a jellyfish. If the body is not balloon-shaped, you would go on to five. So you would continue doing this, and you basically look at the two characteristics and decide which one it has, and then you move on or you identify the organism. We will practice some of those in class, together as a class, and then also one individually that you'll be doing as a kind of a lab.